Welcome, gamers, to episode four of Age of Wonders Four, and we're actually playing as the uh, as this particular character in here, who is um, Gloom, Gloom the Vacant One, uh, who is a melee fighter essentially. But we've uh, we're, we're playing as it, 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 actually I should do a bit of a, a summary as to what's going on. We are playing a like a, a random realm and a random faction. So we sort of uh, chose a random faction to play in a, in a random realm that we don't know really what's coming up. And the way to find out about that is to just press escape or to get into the menu system and just go to realm overview. And that will then give you any information that you do actually have. And so when, when I click on this one, we've found out certain things about the realm traits of this realm, but we don't know all of them. And so that this may chop and change over time. So we started underground, for example. So this is a, um, a civilization only thrives underground on this realm, uh, forcing the throne cities of each empire underground. So we started there. This is why our, our capital city is under here. Uh, not the ideal start for us, really, or for anyone, I don't think. Unless they actually have that, that sort of adaptation, we don't have that adaptation. So, um, so this is not exactly where we want to want to be. We also then found out that we're up against Artica. So Artica is a powerful uh, queen of frost, and she sort of got like frosting. So we're sort of gearing ourselves up for the main fight against her. She's going to be difficult uh, to contend with. Uh, we've got a demonic realm. So this is demonic fiends plague the realm. So fiend units are common. They've been around certainly, but nothing like they, they haven't been a problem for us as such. Uh, this is a good one, which is endless fields, which uh, essentially allows temperate and um, farming and stuff like this to be very very prevalent. But this is on the on the above ground world, not the uh, not the under underground world. Uh, that we started in, and then Lava Lakes, which just, just splits up the, the world. So nothing sort of too dramatic in the randomness that has come through. So um, the hardest one is definitely Domain of the Frost Queen. This is one that we have to contend with. And uh, we then also then just chose our um, our faction based on uh, on r random selections as well. And so we went with a, uh, in fact, if I go into Diplomacy, probably that's going to be the best way to do this one. Um, and click on on mine. We can then sort of see that we're, we're, we're the gracious ill doers, and so we are a elf chassis, which means that we sort of are based on on elves. Uh, the keeper is Gloom, the vacant one, which I'll talk about in just a minute. But the traits that we have for our, I'm, I'm considering them to be dark elves. Um, they're resistant, so they've actually got better resistance against magic, just two, two extra resistance, and they're fast. So 40 movement, base movement on the world map and in combat, but not underground. So we're a little bit slower underground. Uh, actually, no, we sort of have the 40 movement, but we're still, it, it takes us longer to move underground than it does above ground. Uh, the culture that we, that we had was dark. So cities can ignore penalties from low city stability. But having said that, we actually have other things that give us high stability. So it's sort of one of these sort of weird um, uh, dichotomies, I guess, of, uh, of different uh, random things that you wouldn't put together, which I, I quite like that there are things that you can do with this. Uh, anyway, has high knowledge income and gain extra income from prisons and crypts. And uh, units specialise in, in, in inflicting negative status effects and exploiting them with cull the weak. Uh, we start off with a, with an evil alignment, so we're sort of heading more and more evil. Uh, we've got the Perfection Artisans. This is one where we do get extra city stability, but this is the biggest one here is that the city structures cost 100% more production, uh, but they do provide, every city building that we build provides plus five gold in addition to their normal effects. And the racial units, the tier, the tier, the tier three units, start with an extra rank, which is, which is quite useful. And we do start with an extra tier three, three unit. We started off with a uh, Dark Knight, uh, was one of the one of the uh, starting elements we actually had. Uh, the other ones we have is Sion of Evil. So this sudden they share a thirst for knowledge and power, thriving in their pursuit of evil. So cities gain plus a uh, ten percent draft, and your empire gains plus five Imperium per level of evil alignment. So that's pretty cool. So the more evil we get, the better. Uh, we've got negative 10 alignment as a, as a starting point, and units are recruited with plus one rank when you're at the maximum evil alignment. So that's also something we've got to aim for. So we've got to get as, as evil as we possibly can. We start with an extra shock unit or shield unit. We start off with an extra shock unit, which is what the dark, uh, the dark actually starts with. Uh, the gloom, like, is a wizard king, um, so um, like not a um, not a champion, and so gloom is um, is like a 
uh, has come in a sort of like a Wolfkin type um, type chassis uh, back and through here. I, I, I call them chassis, but really it's just the uh, the you know the, the visual look of them. And so all cities have uh, plus ten mana income. Uh, we have uh, plus five world casting points and combat casting points for every two levels the Wizard King has. Wizard Kings have an over channel ability in combat, which allows us to then do like for one turn we can do double spells so there's things like that that we can then go and do so uh, some interesting little aspects about what's going on we're currently evil if I have a look at this one down through here you can see that um, the evilness gives us negative, negative 100 relations with free cities and rulers random events uh, that occur have a, ten, a plus 10 percent chance of being negative uh, and you can see through there the the base is negative 20 and that comes from the seons of evil minus 10 and being a dark realm as well minus 10 and then recent alignment changes we've got um, three negative fives and uh, and but because we haven't done anything for a little while no recent evil actions gave us a like it sort of rebalanced itself back up again but we need to get this evilness to become full evil this is really what we need to do so and we do that by doing evil actions but we're not strong enough yet to really do some evil actions but we will be uh, still probably not this episode but it's certainly in a couple of episodes time at the moment what we're doing is we're just trying to go around and and clean out anything uh like all you know like this for example i haven't cleaned this one out i should have done that actually while i was down this way but we're going to be moving up above ground fairly soon and then we're going to be uh, looking to establish more cities we need to get more cities established just to get our economy under control or or, or thumping along before we take on Attica. That's gonna be very, very hard when she becomes aggressive. At the moment, she's not. We're not at war with her, but uh, we, but that's this could change. Attica did take over a city down here, unfortunately. Um, this is, um, and this one is actually one that is also the Gracious Ill-Doers. So now she's only taken this one over fairly recently. She may be going to convert that across to her own Frostlings, but this would be a good city for us to have ourselves. There is a, there is a gap through there by, by the looks of things. I don't, want to, I don't want to go to war with her. Not yet. We're, not just, we're definitely not ready yet. So we'll um, have to sort of play that one a little bit by ear. Uh, on the above ground, if I press page down, we then cycle through. We don't actually have the umbral realms on this particular one. We've got a couple more heroes. We've got a new hero that's just come in back over through here. So we're getting like the elvish heroes in, in, this, in this instance. And then we've got another hero over here, which is coming over uh, with a view to uh, setting up a new city in here somewhere. So we'll sort of uh, establish a new city back over here. We've got another city that we've only established fairly recently. Uh, so uh, Insultur is this particular city. We're at war with a, a free city back over here, and I will be wanting to go and destroy this as fast as possible, or take it over at least. And these are a city of reavers. Um, yeah, we've got like we need to uh, we need to Zessen is the city that we need to destroy. There's also infestations like the derelict workshop, for example, that we've just sort of come across. They're sending out forces to attack Zessen as well. Um, but anyway, we've got a, a, a little bit of work to do on the above ground and, um, and work to do also, uh, not, not, not much left underground, but we do need to sort of uh, be mindful. Um, we've seen Artica has got like presence up through here. Artica has got presence down this way as well. So there's a lot going on uh, around this particular region. So Artica is, is the big threat. Hopefully we can sort of, uh, find other, um, like other other uh, players that, that will then be able to help us to take on Attica. But uh, we've only come across one of them. There should be another two on the map. All right, so let's... Um, are we up to end our turn yet? No, we're not. This one here, I'm just going to keep that one inside just so we can actually heal up our, our Dark Knight. We're not ready to be able to build our own Dark Knights just yet. And then we've got this one here, which is also just trying to heal up. I'm inside my territory, so that's fine. Um... Got that one there. I might just put them together. Oh, hang on. No, 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 no. Oh, damn it. I've screwed up. I, it was outside my territory. Oh, well. Oh, well. Oh, well. Actually, I should, just, I should have just reloaded, but that's okay. My mistake. So now I'm gonna, it's going to take me a lot longer to heal up. So they're just going around causing 
all sorts of issues for Zessen. Uh, but at the meantime, we have to focus on our, on our, um, uh, what is it? If we just go into here and have a bit of a look, where do I want to go? I'll be wanting to get, uh, um, that. I'll be wanting to probably get that one there. There's a few good things down this way. A couple of farms. I don't want to be too far away from my other support. Um... What's underneath there? Silver tongue fruit. That would be a good one for us as well. I could just go right here and make this my city. There's a gold mine in this one. That one is fairly open. Would we go further down? That one there. Probably in here, I think. We've got access to other farms. Not immediately, though. If... And I don't want to get too close to um, what's happening down this way as well. Um, I've got access to a lot of things here actually. I think I'll just go into this one here and, and make this into uh, where we actually then set up the uh, the outpost. So um, if I just go and click on the unit, build the outpost there. So we'll get the outpost built. Just turn it off. Right, Zessen has sent a war party. So we ha they're going to keep on sending war parties out against us, even though they're sort of under threat themselves. And they'll just keep, they're coming over to try to um, to raid uh, Insul so which is why we've had to keep some armies back here. So we'll just keep them back there, waiting for the, uh, waiting for their raiding forces to arrive. Food shortage, now this is because of a, um, the Blightfall conjugation. Uh, so cities require more food uh, basically to grow. So we're not gonna have any growth for a little while. Uh, it will go eventually, four turns, so we just have to wait that one out. The pyromancer we've actually now just got, which is good. So we can now start to, um, and we want to get these mainly for when we fight Artica. They're not great against the demonic forces on the map, but they are good against um, against Artica. So I'm probably going to want to have warlocks and, uh, like warlocks are our units, and the um, and the uh, the pyromancers are from the tomes, and so. Um, We've got Lesser Magma Spirits, the Brand of Wrath. Yeah, it allows, uh, grants non-dark units color the weak. Now, we don't actually have... We've got one fighter unit in the army at this stage, which is a uh, flying unit. That's all we're going to get at this point in time. The Lesser Magma Spirits... If this... If we can get... Yeah, it's sort of a bit of a... Um, Bit of a waste. We also have the Wayfinder. Very fast movement for scout units. We're not really relying much on scouts, to be honest. So I think I'm going to go... Well, this one's only three turns. Let's just let's just go with the turn. Because, um, although, actually, they would have been okay against Artica. And getting a few of those wouldn't, be, wouldn't have been too bad. Although we don't have a real lot of mana income. Um, I'm just going to move this one back across. Just want to make sure that we end up inside our own territory. That is that unit that we were just were mentioning, that fighter unit. <clears throat> now, there's only one here that's um, that's not great in terms of um, of its uh, movement. You can see how slow we are underground. We are very very slow. Okay, they can just stay where they are. And really, in here, we can pretty much just let um, leave this alone and go back to join up with the others now that we've got the outpost starting. Uh, that's all we needed to really sort of get started there. This one here, um, I'm tempted to go through their territory. I can actually sort of just get on the outside edge of it. 
over there. Maybe I'll do that and just go north. We've sort of we've sort of looked, found everything that we needed to down here. This is controlled by Artica, uh, outpost controlled by Artica. <laughs> Artica is everywhere. Um, let's move across with our scout. And we'll just keep on sort of uh, zipping on through, just seeing what we can find around the map. We have to find these other um, these other heroes, the other uh, players, but they're, they're going to be starting underground as well. So evil, evil presence. This is the um, the derelict workshop. So I'll just get my sound up a little bit. We'll end our turn. Here they come. So this here, you can sort of see with the um, the uh, red skull. Uh, this is sh this means, and I've, I've mentioned this before, that if you see things with white skulls, it's their guards, and they won't move around. Uh, if it's a red skull, like we see here or here, these are from these are either spawners or they're moving around from spawners. If we see like something like this, in this case, Zessen has got like this particular symbol. Each of the actual cities will have a symbol like this where they're actually a, um, an AI type thing. If it's white, it means that we're neutral with them. Um, if we see um, units like this, it means that these are controlled from the city. So this is actually a group that is controlled from the city. Uh, the um, unit that we see coming through here, for example, this is the wandering stack from the city. So red meaning that we're at war with them. So the, the little flags really give you a lot of clues as to what's going on immediately. If you just get used to sort of being able to read those uh, other other sorts of um, like soul again, we're not at war with them. Um, this is showing us that Artica actually, this is a, an outpost from Artica. Where we see things, for example, like this it means that it's it's a flint wall is an independent city but is a vassal to Artica. So Artica is in control of the city. Uh, back over through here at Seoul, um, if we have a bit of a look at it, we'll see that actually Artica's at war with them. Hmm. Yeah, we've got no whispering stones available. We're actually using them ourselves in our capital. I can grab another Whispering Stone if we wanted to. I might actually... You know, I might actually do that, I think. Let's just go back into our um, Imperium. We've got a Whispering Stone here that we can grab. So this is gains the ability to assign Whispering Stones to other Empire's vassals to gain their tribute. Plus, we gain an extra Whispering Stone as well. That's for 175. We can just get a Whispering Stone on its own for 150. But this one here is worthwhile. So, um, so we can actually, so we can, uh, uh, like the ability to, to assign Whispering Stones to others, Empire's vassals to gain their tribute is actually a very, very good one. So I think we'll grab that. We may even grab the other one as well. And make use of this. Let's do it. We're down to 90 now. So by doing, what we can then come back in and do is, there, Artica will be attacking this city and taking it over, but we're going to give a Whispering Stone to it. So that will then sort of start to, um, to they'll become a bit more friendly with us over time, hopefully. <laughs> that's, what we, that's what we want. But even if they're not, um, we can go back to things like uh, Flint Wall and actually give them a Whispering Stone as well and then take the tribute from them that is going to Artica. Like, Artica still gets it as well, but we end up essentially, um, you know, sliding in and, and just grabbing some extra tribute. So that's going to be helpful. Vassal income. There we go. Gold, uh, vas uh, like gold, mana, and knowledge. So we're sort of picking that one up. I might do the same. I can't do it with one that we're at war with, like with Zessen. But we also have the one underground now as well. So I think I'm going to go and do that as well. So let's just go and uh, page down. Go to Slavehold and withdraw the Whispering Stone from here. Now this mainly just deals with city stability, which is not important to us. It's not really important to us. So we're going to take the Whispering Stone away from that one. And then we'll just come down here to um, Thorncroft. 
and give the Whispering Stone into there. And then they don't have quite as much, but this is going to then really boost what we have in through this other side as well. So the more of these we can get around the place, the better. Now there's other things we can actually ultimately get as well. Um, we can get the vision. So again, the ability, um, we can get vision from it as well, if I can find it. <laughs> Three cities with a Whispering Stone assigned instantly provide you with vision range. This is going to be extremely useful. So we need 125 for that one. So let's go, let's now see if we can grab that one as well. And um, the more of these Whispering Stones we can get, the better. It's going to be very, very helpful to us. To our cause, Outpost has been founded. And now two, we need 200, but I can certainly start to get Palisade Walls. So I'll go, I'll go and get those in there. Got a Dark Warrior that was produced at this location, which is good. So they've got a group coming through. Reasonably powerful, a level five hero is uh, is bringing them in with a with also with uh, some mage lock cannons. This is going to be a little bit more tricky than what we would expect, but we, we are going to have to go and deal with that other group. So we'll bring this hero back. Conduit province, uh, yeah, Conduit province of Slavehold has starved, so we've got so we're losing um, population unfortunately. So we. Um, we now we now at plus one because the population has gone down, so we've actually lost a population. When this event goes, that will then sort of fix itself up. Um, this one we do actually have positive population because of we've, we do actually have some farming. We can now expand, and we need to, we've got a quest where we need to get more farms anyway. So I'm going to grab another farm here. This is this one down through this other side. So, I'll just leave that one where that is. And then these, yeah, we've actually now lost this province out through here, unfortunately. Bring those up. I'll just bring that one across. Leave that one there. <coughs> excuse me, I've still got a tickle in the throat, um, so you have to excuse my coughing. All right, all right, all right. What is required is a cartographer. New location, again, an independent city. Now these are, um, even though these are red, they're not moving off from these locations, so it's not really something we have to worry about, but I'm going to stay on the outside of their territory, just so that, um, so that we're not sort of triggering too much going on with the, with the actual scout unit. All right, we'll end our turn here. I need to save up to get the 200. So we've got a hero here, a level five hero. We've got our um, level four hero coming back in through this other side. These are both mages. Whoops, and I'll just move this one across to there. We'll fight this fight in a little while. I'll just move that group into there. So we've now got the, um, the, the collection, the collection of forces now is uh, fairly strong. So we've got two ranged units, uh, two shock, well, th three shock units, but two two low level shock units, one high level shock unit plus the uh, plus their four level the level four mage, with frost bolts and uh, fire evocation. We're going to be wanting to get uh, fire bolts at some point or some some sort of different magical um, orb that they carry. And so similarly over through here, we've got frost bolts here. These are fine against these units, so that really isn't a problem. Uh, let's just go down. Domain has been invaded. We'll come back to that one. So Artica has denounced another ruler. So uh, uh, so uh, they're basically sort of saying that uh, Obscuros, the dragon, uh, these not claims and provinces. So it looks like they're bought, they're bordering each other. That's interesting. 
Um, we are going to have to do something with, with um, well, neither of them like us. Like they, they pretty much hate us. So we're not going to be able to do anything at all with those. The relation, actually, Artica's a bit more friendly with us than, than Obscuro is, but Artica is just way too strong. Uh, Sol, the free city. Um, actually, Sol, why is that? Have they gone to war with us? No, they haven't. They're at war with Obscuro. That's interesting. They gave our free... Uh, this one back. So we now have one more Whispering Stone. I think I'll save up to get the city before we end up Although it would be handy to sort of know what's around, but I don't think I need to know what's around. The cost of finding a new city is 200 Imperium. So let's just save that up for two more turns. That will be, that will be good. Now we want to just be within three, or sorry, within one, two, three of the actual attack. Uh, so we'll go and grab this one as well. And we then want to bring the others back up stairs. So I'm just going to very quickly destroy this one so there is a combat enchantment in through here of blightful conjugation but this is absolutely an easy one for us so we're just going to do an auto combat unless we sort of really lose out badly we won't worry too much about it we'll just close that one off and we've got resistant defender so we don't i'll take the reward don't really need it yeah that's all okay there as well so we'll bring all the armies up together now and then we'll go after Zessen so we'll uh, destroy Zessen I need to just uncover this one yeah th these are the sorts of things we probably want to wait until we can actually get these mana and knowledge uh, things for destroy like for uh, for conquest for conquering a city there's gonna be a lot of these that will be coming up we need the 200. We can get the vision range now, but it's, I'm not really ready for that just yet. All right, so um, we've got a free. We've got a, um, a, a whispering stone in there. I don't know if we can actually talk with some of these other cities because we haven't really seen them. There are other cities back over here, for example, but we don't know them. We haven't actually made contact with them. There's nothing else there. Oh, there's Artica. That must be Artica's... Um, that must be where Artica actually is. That's handy to know where she actually is on the map. Let's go above ground. Let's just see what we can see up through here. The other cities. Why did they give us this bun back? Oh, because they're under siege. That will, that will be okay again at some point. We have a Whispering Stone in through there. We can't give a Whispering Stone into the city. And we're aware of this, but we don't. We haven't gone there. So we'll see if we can find some other cities so we can give the Whispering Stones to and um, do it that way. There may, there may This one may be a vassal city in here as well. I've got a funny feeling it may be actually. We might move across and have a bit of a look and see what we can spot. Okay, we've got exp uh, the experimentation chambers back and through this other side. Uh, blacksmith is going to boost our draft income. We're trying to get like constrictors and also um, the warlock. I might ditch the warlock and uh, we'll then get a we we'll start to get some pyromancers. I need to probably start to get, get those in the other cities as well or the other city that we have. Now, um, it's going to give us. Um, we get extra Imperium income from this one, which would be handy now. It's only two turns. Let's go and grab it.
Well, we've got the attack that we have to now deal with. So um, we've got, these are the forces we have available to us, so we'll just go and attack. Both forces will uh, will participate in this particular attack. It's a, um, a low-risk battle, but still going to have some some interest in it. So I think I'll play this one out uh, properly. Um, this is, this is, these are going to get more and more compli complicated. We do actually have a few other little things that we did pick up. So we, we do actually have, um, yeah, plus for, but we gain 150 knowledge per hero defeated in combat, which is good for us. So we've got that one already because we are going to be defeating more and more of these. So even just waiting for them to come is still actually a good thing for us. Do we have a, it looks like we can actually pick up another, another area. You know, we've, we're getting the farm there. We've got the farm established. We've got to get three farms. So I'm going to I'm going to be able to get another one somewhere else. If I just close that one off for a second, you've got two of three. We've got fourteen turns, and that's going to be heaps. So let's just go after some of the other, some of the other other like things like the mine, for example. I think would be would be the ideal. So let's just go and grab um, probably the, we'll go to quarry. Quarries um, are really required for us to be able to build quickly. So we'll grab the quarry and what have we come across? We've got another another unit. So um, so you are the inconsiderate Empress Gloom, uh, the vacant one. I am High Priest uh, Exalt the Just. Looks like we've got some halflings here. Um, I have to make um, uh, many go to make war, I am to make peace, even with the likes of you. Now, the relations are, are bad at the start, but this one's good. Honorable manlings. So these are, um, the, the, he's in charge of humans. So he's a, um, he's a mage in charge of humans, a, a um, halfling mage. We don't know where his throne city is. Chivalrous diplomat. So an honourable ruler who believes in justice and peace. So likes empires that have many alliances. Likes empires with good relations with free cities. Dislikes empires that make treaties. Dislikes empires that start wars. So informs their behaviour on the strategic map. So that's why he's sort of negative to us is because we're at war with Zessen. Um, I think I'm just going to say goodbye for now. We don't know exactly where he is. I'm not sure... We're not seeing, look, we have to be a little bit careful. We need to make sure that we've got um, transport established very quickly between our cities so that we so that we can always come back and um, and make sure that, you know, if there's a siege that happens, we can sort of uh, take care of it. The Constrictor is still three turns away there. We'll, I will come back into here and actually grab myself a Pyromancer. Oh, actually, no, I can't. Um, we get another Pursuer here. Yeah, the city's not big enough. Not yet, anyway. All right, so time for the attack. Quick save, just in case something goes wrong. You don't really need to do it anymore. Oh, hang on, that's going to be one more turn to do that one. Um, I'll just go and grab this unit. Now, there's a combat enchantment. Blightfall Conjugation, each turn in combat a random unit takes 15 blight damage, becomes diseased. So this is actually something that can happen anywhere. So we have to be a bit careful of that. This is just because of the Conjugation. Uh, it's also then um, causing us to starve. Uh, it's a, just a global event. Uh, so we'll just go into manual combat. We shouldn't have too much trouble. I am a little bit concerned about the cannon. You can click on these or right click on these to see what it actually is that, that you're dealing with. In this case, we've got a mage lock cannon, which um, does a lot of damage, a lot of physical damage. Uh, it's So units in a three hex line sustain damage. So we have to be careful of the angles that the, uh, that, the that this gun can, can fire. Piercing, so it ignores 50% of the target's defense. So that's, this is a problem. Focused aggression, plus 10% damage per stack of marked on the target. And breaching, ignores 50% of the target's resistance as well. So... Um, that's uh, that shouldn't really worry us. It's only physical damage. Now it's um, the fire cannon does it can't move and fire, so we're going to have to figure out the best way of dealing with that one. We're going to be wanting to destroy this as fast as we possibly can. Um, siege breaker. It's mainly used for sieges. 
but that's fine. And then we've just we've got a, a pyromancer in, th in there as well as a an overseer unit, which is going to be a um, uh, like a support unit. So it's got um, marking blast. So this one actually does like do a fire blast, but also then creates uh, marks the unit. It makes them easier to hit. Um, so we have to be like that's not terrible. That, that's not going to be terribly difficult to deal with. We do actually have a mercenary unit, which is just their basic pikemen. Again, they've got the um, flame blessed champions and things like this. So they've got um, like we were also going in with flame weapons as well. So. Uh, since the last time we actually did one of these fights. So there's a few little things we have to be concerned with. Uh, the actual hero themselves is an archer. Okay, the archer has got... Um, what has this one got? This is the sniping spark caller. A uh, range of four with shoot bow. Does uh, electrical damage or, or lightning damage as well. Uh, does actually have healthy mail. Hmm, okay. All right, that's fine. Well, let's uh, manual combat this one and see how we go. So we've got a lot to consider now. Like the uh, the combat is now becoming more and more difficult. Again, if you're new to the game, uh, just start to um, play the easy ones and just get used to looking at what the units actually have and what they do, because it really makes a massive difference. So the thing we, we sort of saw there before with the cannon, the cannon has got this shot. Now, if we have a look at the actual shot through here, um, this doesn't say if it's going to take yeah so it's got a, a shot we're gonna do a shot you can shoot there and grab and get anything in the middle there and get the two that are there you can get one down through there and it then changes angles as it sort of goes from this other side um, it's funny yeah it can't actually fire there for whatever reason I would think that that would then chop and change, to be honest. I think it just can't fire above its own unit. So this is a little bit dangerous down in here, in these two. I don't mind it having a a shot at something, but I might as well ignore. I might as well avoid this area and just let it make it so that it's probably going to come to this spot here to give it a um, to give it an overview of the whole the whole area. Again, if we have a look at it from this other other side, let's see if we can sort of start to move in and again we've just got to have to be um, wary of those two areas in, in through that other side we've got good balance with all of, with both of our units this is an interesting one because we've got seduction here um, you've got restoration we've got some good stuff in here I think as, if, as long as we're moving up, let's just let's just sit and wait. We'll take it in two in from two sides. Again, we're just avoiding where that cannon can reach initially. Sunflowers. And it can't reach into this other corner. Okay, that just that's just going to give us a good hit at this thing if it, if it does sort of come back down the other side. They're probably going to now split up and go different ways. This is another uh, magical unit, but we'll just leave it in behind. these the, the pyromancer can certainly move down and start to do some damage it does have this flame strike and it can actually hit all of these so i don't want to have it have all three so i'm going to move some of these back a, a little bit just make it so that it doesn't get its own way initially That'll do us. They're using spells. 
Yep, so they did actually attack both of those. It's been blinded and marked and condemned and burning. <laughs> A bit of everything. Yeah, there's the cannon. So, um, this unit has taken a lot of damage. Uh, we've only got 5% chance of hitting that one through there. This one, this unit we can sort of see has got the, uh, is diseased. It did actually take the random attack that came from this thing, I think, uh, with the blight damage. Um, it is lucky with where it's actually standing. Uh, not that that's going to help us that much. This unit uh, loses 5 morale at the end of its turn. It's got the spear and it's also condemned. So it's got uh, less, it's easier to hit. So, um, we can start to charge these. Now, let's just check and see if, can it fire this? Cannot be used when within a, an enemy zone of control, which means that if we have any of our units standing next to it, it's uh, any of our melee units, it's not gonna be able to, to do anything. So, when we can do that with either one of these. So I'm gonna go and move this one up to attack, the, um, to, to attack this unit. But we'll just do it bit by bit. Let's go and move this one into the flanking position around here. Just so we can get, start to get some shots. Mm -hmm. I've only got a 5% chance there. Sixty-five percent, twenty-five percent. Yeah, this one, this one's going to be very, very hard to hit. But we can weaken this. Yeah, we did weaken it twice. Now yeah, we've also got. Frost Evocation. Uh, probably don't really need that one as such. Seduce. 35% to seduce that one. It's not really going to sort of do much, I don't think. So let's just go and um, and set this one up. And then we'll just go and do the attack into this zone of control. So this is now pinned this unit which means it doesn't get its shot away. And the shot that it's got requires all three action points. So it can't do that one. It has to move and then it still can't fire. So we've now got this unit here, which is, um, what's this one here? We've got the Zesson users Condemnation. They use it on this unit here. We do have spells now ready to launch. There's another one of these ones where I think we're gonna be okay up this, up this side. I'm happy with where we are here. It's really going to be this one in here. So let's go and grab ourselves another one of the uh, Conjure Tentacles and place it in here. And really, we're going to have to melee this guy because he's he's got uh, abilities to um, see if we can actually lock him in. Constricting was restricted and resisted, and we did constrict him. He can can no longer move from there. So if we have a look and see what um, what uh, Veramek Trax has actually got, he does have Blink, um, he's got, which is giving him 40% evasion. So he's actually got that one through there. He's now burning for three more turns, and he's constricted, which means he's immobilized and going to take some physical damage as well. Uh, fleeting is uh, this unit is not stopped by enemy zone of control, so we can sort of maneuver and move into uh, into position. Um, inspiring leader, overwhelm tactics, slippery. This makes him. Uh, this unit does not trigger opportunity attacks, very much like fleeting. Um, is ignores the effects of slowing to, uh, terrain in combat, so he's very very quick. But he's now locked in. <laughs> he does have a quick stab for, for 16 damage, so he'll probably use that probably against the, um, uh, the, 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 the vine, like that vine that we just brought in. Uh, Blink is, um, makes, this unit, uh, makes the unit teleport to target Hex and, um, 
and grants it 40% evasion for one turn. It cooldown is two, but it's blocked by being immobilized. So because we constricted it, it can no longer use that one. But the uh, things like the blink, like this evasion is making it extremely hard to hit. And we can sort of see it if we if we go and uh, use this unit and just hover over there. You can see it's 5%. If I press control, we can see all of the aspects that makes this a difficult fight, a difficult attack. So we have a... Um, 39% uh, of weakening it for three turns if we do get the hit. Critical hit chance is only 5%, even though we're standing in the lucky flowers. So we, we actually don't have... The luck is not great, even though we're in, in sort of lucky lucky clovers. Um, then we've got negative 25% because it's long range, negative 25% because of quick, quick reflexes, minus 40% because of blink, and then minus 40% because of skewed by obstacle. But even, even without those, if I go and grab this unit here, for example, I don't think we can see it now, but it's still not going to be great. This unit can't move, so I might as well take the fight up here. Now, this unit may get killed. Um, we'll just keep on sort of uh, working our way through here. You can see there, we've still got Obscured by Obstacle there. The only thing that they're going to have left down this way now is um, is spell casting. So I'm hoping that this one will be able to um, to hold on. All right, now we have um, this one. Now we've got the mercenary unit, which is a pole arm unit. It's it's you really do need to know what the basic units will do. And so in this case, the pole arm unit will get a retaliation strike uh, straight away. So if we have a quick look and see what it does do, um, it's this one here. So pole arm unit. Uh, so special, specializes in taking out large uh, threats and cavalry and can counter shock here unit charges. Polo units have first strike and charge resistance, plus 40% damage against cavalry and large targets. But first strike is the one that we essentially, it means that our shock units aren't going to easily sort of be able to come in and, and do different things with it. Uh, let's go and smash these. We've got fire ever, evocation, we've got lightning evocation. 75% chance there to do some damage. I, mean, I, could, I could just hit both of these. Hit them with this as well. I think I'm just going to go this way. And we can then weaken it. Again with this. Now, when we attack, there is a retaliation strike, but it's only going to do five damage. We're going to do 17 damage with this one. The charge is blocked uh, because it's a pole arm unit. We can also charge this one. This one here is a support unit, and what it is is wanting to do is um, what does this one do? 90% chance to link with and inflict subdued. Um, yeah, it's got to be immobilized, frozen, or stunned, which is not going to be the case. So, uh, so we'll, we want to get this one up into here. Now we're already burning, so that's not going to really worry us too much. And uh, we can then sort of start to just just do a charge strike in here. And this one is a support unit, so it really does need to try to get away. We have the knight, which can start to make its way back around the outside, or we can charge straight in and almost kill this. And again, it's already burning, so I might as well do that, I think. Let's just move this one up. A 65% chance there. thing is, do these actually have the, um, the pure flame, pure flames, pure flame staves? But they don't actually have. They're not going to stay alive. Uh, like if we do hit them, so they will actually, they will be destroyed. Okay, that one's down. And then we've still got this one here that we can then go and charge. Some retaliation, and then bang, in we go. 
So we're doing well in this corner, um, even though we're sort of, you know, we've got fire coming in. And this is one here. Every turn in combat, a random unit takes 15 blight damage. So hopefully it's not going to be this one again. <laughs> Otherwise this one's dead. So we'll end our turn there. Ah, they got them. So again, knowing what the units can do and, and how they're impacted makes a massive difference. This one's trying to move away. It moved away a fair distance. Now, Constricted is now gone from this unit, but this one's almost dead. So we'll, we might as well try to finish it off. has been constricted yet again. It's essentially dead. Um, it can't do anything. And we can now keep on just following, because our units move so fast, we can uh, follow this, the, this unit down as well. And um, in fact, I can go with both of these units and kill that one off if we wanted to. Got 25% chance now of hitting this one. It's a little bit easier for us to hit. And this one as well, 45%. So we will be able to kill this one straight away. Which means I might as well start to bring these around to um, to lend support. Forty percent up this way. Two misses. That's not good. Yeah, I might as well finish this off. <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me. Got this tickle in the throat is so annoying. Put this down. Done and dusted. Got another forty percent from the top here, so we'll take that. Finally got a hit, and we did weaken it. All right, so we've got our different units back in through this other side as well. Um, that's going to kill that one off, so let's just get rid of it. Oh, Keeper's Mark. This one does have Keeper's Mark. And we'll come charging into here. I knew some of them had it. <laughs> Which keeps it alive for one turn. So now all we have is just the one unit. Um, again, we have to wait another turn, which means that there's going to be a random unit uh, hit by the um, by the disease. We just got to hope it's not this unit here. I can't do anything about the keeper's mark, so it's just an in-turn aspect here. That's okay. That's okay. Right. Okay, that was good. We got through that one unscathed. Yay us. <laughs> so that one that one worked out well. Uh, we'll close that one off. All right. Um, we'll move this one back in again. So um, they'll just heal up a little bit, but uh, we'll end up having the other army come, you know, getting ready to now come back out, and um, and so we'll be able to then take them on. Which would be which would be very very good. The remains of Veramek tracks has now been uh, put into the crypt, uh, back in through here. Um, if you inspect, he did actually have some interesting things. Not not we we can't really use that one. This one here getting plus ten hit points, but also plus two blight resistance. It's okay, but not not dramatically good. I do think I'll just leave him in the crypt. You can ultimately sort of get. Um, you know, we can sell it if we, if we need money or whatever else there might actually be. Uh, we'll just leave it where that is. 
Okay. The brand of wrath has now has now been researched. Select new research. Tome of scrying. Okay, so we're up to the next tome. Hmm. I wouldn't mind getting more chaos, to be honest. Um, this one gives us astral. Tome of summoning. Mayhem gives us two chaos. These would sort of work in behind us, uh, like working uh, working well with us. I think like things like the Gremlins, Mark of Misfortune, yeah, Curse of Misfortune. That's not a bad one for us. Not terrible. Revelry. We don't. Not really going to work for us. Then we've got things like the um, the Construct with the Bronze Golems. Probably don't really need this one as such. Uh, iron golems are always good. Siege magic artisans. Yeah, which gives us more critical hit chances. I do like these a lot. <laughs> this would actually really, uh, this would really flesh out a lot of what we can do. Um, highly defensive shield unit. We don't have any shield units natively, and so this would this would sort of round out our um, what we do. This would then take us more into order, uh, like or two materium. Um, Seeker arrows is a good one as well for us. Yeah, it's not bad that materium one. And the Zephyr archer. These are great. Glades. We probably don't want to go nature as such. A bit to bit to consider here. It's the Inquisition. That's order. We don't want to go order. We really have no need for it. And then we go into the shadow. The banshee wouldn't be bad. Despair wouldn't be bad. Cruel weaponry for the shock units. Thirty percent damage against units with morale of low or worse. Um, that will happen. The Joy Siphoners probably won't go that way. Uh, Tome of Souls, this and it sort of heads us down towards uh, like the undead armies and things like that. I don't really want to go that way. We're back to scrying again. I might just pause and have a bit of a think about it. Yeah, there's no clear one to go with, but I think I'm going to go this way just to try to get more chaos. Chaos will then allow us to buff our low level units fairly, fairly effectively. So I'm going to select this particular one. This one also getting misfortune and trying to um, trying to sort of get critical hits will actually work out fairly well. Bringing confusion, making fingers numbed by uncertainty lose their grip. Yeah, this in one the here. That creeps into thoughts, sowing the seeds of madness, of insanity in those who oppose. This is a good one for us as well. Being Mark of misfortune, though. Standing over the gibbering mess that was once your enemy. Again, this will this will dramatically reduce. Um, the morale of all sorts of different units because we've got so many different ranged units. Oh, I'm really thinking this is a good one for us. <laughs> Which one do we go with? They're both five turns. I think I'm going to go Mark of Misfortune. I wouldn't mind the Gremlin. But I'll go this way. And then we'll probably go with the Gremlin after that. There's something moving down there. Just gonna keep this one. Keep that one there. There's a gremlin there, for example. Um, we'll move on up. Then give our see if we see what we can find in through here as well. I'm glad I did cut through actually and, and get to the other side of the city. I think we'll take Zessen out. Oh, here comes Obscuro, just scouting around. That's okay. Single unit. And it's just a scout unit. And it's just wandering around. Spells ready to cast. The Band of Wrath grants non-dark units. The base upkeep. I think of. It's not really... It's not really all that great. Um, 
we're not re we don't have a hell of a lot to do with that one maybe i will do it like we do have a bit of income and we're going to get more and more so i will actually cast that particular spell we've got the palisade walls we're still trying to get the 200 um watchtower so it builds a watchtower in the outpost green in the outpost plus three vision range and sensing range stone walls two turns for 170 i think i'll take that that way we start off with a fairly strong city it's the fastest way to get to get uh, walls up in a in a future city. Now we should be building here. Yeah, we're building a pursuer there. Let's just go back down underground. But the constrictor's still two turns away. So a sort of more defensive type unit. We definitely want to get pyromancers. We'll grab two two pyromancers from there. Cross and besiege Zessen. Mm. Uh, now, what have we got in here? One each of those plus a fighter. We'll just go with that. It gives us a, a full stack. I'll, I'll just leave the two that are here. blood location now this is an actual this is that um, this is a, a, the town of, of Thistledown so this is actually a town that has been made by the uh, by the halflings I have to sort of scoot around the outside of this one see what's happened down here with Sol still under siege for another two turns End our turn there. Well, I'm out of time actually, guys. So I'm, I'm just, I'll just wait for the turn to start and then we'll sort of call it quits at that point. But uh, the thing I love about this game, it's it sort of, it, it will build up its own energy and its own sort of, um, like everything is cohesive in the game, but, um, but the procedural generation and the randomness of it really does enhance the game. Like it's, um, it's a very special game, I think, in just in this in the sense that it, it makes sense of the randomization to create like a story, which is beautifully done. Blightful conjugation aftermath. So the realm has finally um, permitted respite. The blightful conjugation has ended. Good. Your famished, uh, gracious ill doers are relieved to find an abundance of fresh foods after such a uh, deprivation. Your warriors, uh, full belly once again, stand firm and strong, uh, strong and firm, ready at your command. So learn the Blightful Conjugation spell to curse your enemies with this plague. So um, we can do this one, which will then cause us to go, like, because we're evil, we can, we can do this one here. Um, let's do it. <clears throat> All right, so spell ready, Band of Wrath. And so it, this is the only unit that's actually impacted by it. I'll just do that one. It just drains a little bit of mana, nothing too much. Wizard Tower has been produced in through here. We've now got positive food. We're probably going to have to get a farm at some point. All right, all right, all right, all right. Um, Wizard Tower level one. We get um, even more Imperium. The prison cells. So heroes in prisons can be converted or executed once we get this this one here. But things like the Dark Forge, which you can build out in the provinces, I don't think I really want that one so much. The Ritual Pyre will be important to us at some stage, but not yet. We'll just keep on building things. We've got the Underground Laboratory. Gold and Knowledge unlocks the Mint. 
Uh, this is the crypts. So plus two mana, income per hero in the crypt. Um, they can be resurrected. That's only two turns to get that one. That's going to then imp improve our mana. The stonemason production is a good one. We don't get the boost though, so six turns for that one. The monolith we won't worry about at this stage. Interrogation dungeon. Um, yeah, we get plus two knowledge income per hero in the prison. Again, we're sort of starting to pick them up. The granary. Uh, requires, uh, unlocks the estate hall, but this one does give us plus 20 food income. Speeding up, this one's not bad. It's only six turns for that one. Let's go and grab that. That's sort of like a bit of a no-brainer, really, for where we currently are. Um, they've produced the Palisade Walls, so that's good. And um, we'll just go back in. What else can they get? Granary, again, would be good for them. That's if they've got two Foresters. The Stonemason is boosted here with the um, with the two farms that we do actually have, and the Shrine is boosted. The Stonemason, I think I'm going to go the production because that's one that's actually we got this one now boosted as well. Hmm. I'll just lock them together. Like we can certainly afford to queue them up. Um, with what we have in through here, I'll grab another Dark Warrior. We can get these like again fairly cheaply. All right, that's good. Uh, back over through here, one more turn with this outpost. So we'll save this up so we can actually make this into a city. One thing I'm not sure about with this, if we, can we set up where they build their own roads? Yeah, roads are built on hexes that an army travels over at the cost of three. Let's just go and do that. So this is a temple. This is a silver. It's going to be. We're going to be able to get it soonish, I think. And we'll just keep on building the roads. So we'll just make it so we can get across this one real relatively quickly if we have to. We do have roads that go down here, but we can probably get a more direct road uh, through this area as well. <coughs> Well, across we go. Yeah. Now we want to stay with everyone together. <laughs> and pillage the province over two turns. And I think we can pillage that as well. So two turns to do these pillagings as we come through. Um, but we'll start to uh, start to now move in and besiege Zessen and destroy it. Just move around the outside here. Oh, I'm out of time. <laughs> I keep on just wanting to play more and more and more. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. I will catch you in the next exciting episode. Things are starting to, um, the tensions are rising. Things are starting to sort of happen. The story elements are sort of starting to make, like this. everything is shuffling into position. So I'll catch you in episode five. Please like and subscribe if you like this sort of content.